I'll be sitting back here breathing engine fumes because at my age, there's so few joys left in life. <laughs> so, but, oh, 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 no. I've disarmed myself. I, I don't think we should drop test it with a mind roll. Why not? Well, because that's almost unfair. Life is unfair, man. Okay. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Pick Me Up, Scotty. I'm Scotty, and this is... Sean, a.k.a. The Silver Spleen. And we never left. No, we're we just didn't. rolling out review we after review. Yeah. And one time. Yes. Check this sucker out. Oh! This looks like something out of Mad Max, man. Almost. Very close. Yeah. So this is Panos. How do you even say the name of this tank, man? Magach. Uh, I would say, yes, the M60 Magach Israeli battle tank. Number 632004. Ages six and above. 1,398 pieces. Wow. So kudos to Panos for coming out with some crazy ideas. And speaking of, before we jump into this real quick, you know, Sean has a video that he reviewed at one of the, I don't know how to, how do you describe this film? It's called Wandering Earth. The Wandering Earth, yes. It's, which is? Uh, it's the biggest Chinese science fiction blockbuster. It was, uh, I think it, it's on its way to becoming certainly one of the top five top grossing Chinese films ever. Really big film. Big, China. big film. And, and not, it's really not, look, it's no more nationalistic than Armageddon. All right, let's just put it that way. And it's actually coming out to Netflix. Yes. I don't know when, they didn't announce it. I don't know either. What I wanted to mention was that Panos yes. actually made the vehicle from that movie, yes. which I have, but I haven't built it yet. Right. I like the fact that it's an Earth truck. I, I, there should be no um, endorsement or rights purchases implied. I, I get that impression. But even when you just look at it, even if you haven't seen the film, if you've seen any pictures of the film, you know that that's exactly what it is. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing yeah, this I thing. can't wait to build this because yeah. like, even on the back here on the manual, all the pieces, the top's gonna come off and it's got a lot of stuff on the interior. Yeah. Like on this side. It looks really good. This is really cool. And this, and this tank will be available, or it actually is, it is available on BreakMeUpScotty.com. Yeah. yeah, go to his channel. I'll put his link on the movie review yes. there. And you're like a megastar now in China. No, I'm not Congrats. Really. Hardly, hardly. All right, so tell us, walk all us right. through this thing. Okay, so the M60 was an American design. It was the main battle tank throughout most of the Cold War. And obviously, starting in the 1960s, the U.S. would sell them to other places, Israel being one of them. Israel needed an upgrade from the M48, which did not fare as well in some of their early wars. So they got the M60 and naturally began to modify and improve it. I don't think they still use them today. Some countries still do, actually, but Israel doesn't. This doesn't look like the traditional or the original M60 tank, except in the drive area but it's had the addition here, like we talked about in the other video, of ERA, Explosive Reactive Armor, which basically is a design where you cover the outside of a tank in an explosive material so that when a charge, you know, when a, when a shell hits it, that explosion will uh, detonate that other shell, the incoming shell, hopefully saving the tank itself. It's an odd concept, but apparently it works. And as we said in the other one, it's nice that they used, what were these originally? Gold, gold, yeah, gold bars, bars. Or something, but it, it really manages to be evocative of the design. The other thing I really like about this is there's not many studs visible. Yeah, um, a couple. And, it, and in the case of this tank and the other one, I think it's so that you could also festoon, there's a good word, you could festoon the outside with action figures. This strange thing, I've, I've seen, the internet is always such a great place to hear people say things because half the time they're not true. Someone said, oh, this is so that after the war they can use it as a plow. No, I'm sorry, that's not it. This is called a mine roller. As you can imagine, in the desert, which is very suited to tank warfare because you have very large open flat spaces, landmines also are very useful. So what you have to do, and this is something they'd done as early as, I would say, World War II, uh, when the British and the Germans were fighting in Egypt, is you create something that goes in front of the tank and if this sets off a mine and blows it up, this, replacing this, is much cheaper than replacing this. So this is actually a design for detecting and detonating landmines, which certainly works better than the old Polish army mine detector. You can actually pretend that this is a mine, just show an example. Yeah. See? Beep, 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 beep. Bang, boom. Boom, and if this is damaged, you just swap those parts out, right? Very cool, I mean, this thing takes it to another level. It's an extremely practical, simple solution because as I said, the old version of mine detection was really not good. Unlike the last tank, last tank with all prints, this tank actually does have stickers. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna put the sticker sheet here. Can you guys see that? Yeah, right there. Just so you know, I didn't feel like the tank needed it. You know, you can put it on yourself, 
And of course, some of them will go over tiles. So I'm just saving it, but just so you guys can see, this does have stickers with the set. Now, if you're still gawking over the set, then you might have realized that all these close-ups, I actually put the sticker on the set. I thought to myself, if I'm going to review the set, I might as well just use them for the close-ups so you guys can see what it looks like if you really do apply them on there. Quality-wise, it's actually pretty okay. There's some bubbles in there in the transparent part, and you know, like I said, it will go over your tiles, but it's not bad. I, I kind of like it, but I still think after seeing these shots, you really don't need to use them. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm missing one piece. I don't know if I just misplaced it or threw it away by accident. It does have a cloth material, kind of like the other tank, but the cloth material actually covers here in the front. You can actually see it better here in the manual right there. And I just couldn't find it. I don't know if I threw it away because it's like, oh, it's not a brick, so just throw it away. Mm -hmm. But is that important? I can always get replacement. That's a good thing if you do order from us, is we can actually get missing parts most of the time. Sorry, it's missing. Yeah. Looks fine like that to me, though. Yeah, it's probably just intended as a, a dust shroud to try to keep sand and dust out of the... Uh -huh. I would assume that's part of the targeting system. I'm not really sure. One of the things I like about this, this features, this is called the commander's cupola. That's so that the commander, oops, the Bye. commander of the tank, in theory, can observe the battlefield and give commands while in relative safety. The only problem, the M60 in general, and especially with the commander's cupola, it presented a rather high profile, therefore an easy target. But again, you know, as time goes on, and, and that's one of the reasons you'll notice tanks, believe it or not, getting sort of lower and lower. What I love about the top here is you can pull that up, you can put a minifigure there. Yes. It has three extra hatches here on the back that you can certainly lift open. Don't close them all the way though, or else you won't be able to get it back open. Right. This is yeah. very nicely built like the other one. Yeah. Which makes a big Not difference. Not falling apart. Yeah. Except the small stuff. It's a nice you know. detail of it. Got a couple of the gun chips. So these are, like machine. I said before, right. they're really using plastic guns here. Yeah. Except for this one, it's like brick built. I like the other one better because, you know, you build it. There Look we at go. that. Got yeah. a whole army up there already. See? That's really cool. This rotates just fine. It does catch onto some of the bricks here, so but it can rotate. Maybe they should have made this part a little bit higher. It's catching on the back here, uh, this part. Oh, okay. I don't know what this is, like a flap. I don't know why it comes up. I'm not even sure. Or if it's just design, it's supposed mm. to be there like that. Other than that, for the top piece, the back here can rotate. I'm not sure what That's you nice. want to do with that, but it's just like extra gear, I guess. Yeah. So it has ball joints there that can move. And then, you know, all these little pieces here are movable, but they're just kind of there in an angle. There's detail mm -hmm. on the inside. You guys ready for this? Well, first of all, we can take this piece off, right. by the way. You didn't want to attach this onto here. Oh, perfect. All right, so I'm going to pop this piece off. Pull off the turret. <sighs> there it goes, very nice. And this actually, in its own way, is, is quite realistic. If you actually pull a turret off, you'd oh, yeah? Think, yeah, you would see something like cool. this. Cool, and there is the inside, nothing there, because that's where the turret was but it does have some detail on the front. You have to open the hatch here, it's kind of hard to get to. Open it there, uh -huh. there you go. Driver's seat. Now, yeah, it has a driver's seat, it has a proper chair in there. Oh, nice. Unfortunately, it has no decoration, like no, no, I mean, nothing on the dashboard. No. Not even, there's no stickers, nothing. No. I don't know why they didn't have the prints. Like the last tank, the back does open up here. And you can, look it up. You can stick your finger in through there. That is nice. Look at that. Okay, just like the other one. There is an engine in there. Very nice. You could take it out, but the way that it's built, it, the pieces on top kind of make it harder for you to actually pull out the whole thing. Right. But it is built first, and then you slot it in, and then you put the big bricks on top of that. Yeah. So just so you know. Almost like a real one. Yeah. Because that's the thing people don't realize about tanks is when they design them, you have to think about doing maintenance and stuff like that. So you have to be able to, you know, bring the turret or sometimes swap the engines out, do stuff like that. Pretty cool, I like it. Yeah. And of course, just, you know, as usual, like That's the last good. tank, these wheel things are kind of tight. They yeah. can rotate, but, you know, this is gonna be more of a display thing, you know? That's certainly better than some other tanks. I know, right? Look at it. Yeah. It's, like a, it's solid like a Built rock. Built like a tank. <laughs> yeah, and these flaps can move like that. And I forgot to mention the other tank too. This front piece does open up and close. Right, but I don't... But you said it's like it's, nothing no, it's, for the angle and the design look of it, I guess. And on the back here, same deal. It does open up in the back though, like that. Yeah, well, probably for engine maintenance, things of that nature. And you have two ladders there, or grills. One of the things you'll see if you study a lot of the pictures from uh, World War II or even uh, the Israeli wars, you would have to carry things to help. Sometimes if you get stuck in the sand, so you'd actually carry pieces of equipment that would allow you to get out. And of course, we have the minifigures. Yeah, we gotta look yes. at the minifigures. Again, one of the details that I really appreciate, there's six figures here, 
and each one of them has a unique chest rig configuration and it's printed right on there. Really high level of detail, they're all different. That's nice because you don't always get to see that. Nice, I like the matte finish on the helmet. Yeah, he looked cool, I like his uh, beard. M249, I believe, 249 squad automatic weapon. Yes, he's got a, a very stylish beard, black gloves, and this is... Discard to re-roll. I okay. like that username. Yeah, very nice. There you go. Ah, radio operator, it looks like, which is odd because if you're in a tank, the tank should have a radio. Carrying a Desert Eagle, which in this case is very nice because the Desert Eagle is in fact made in Israel. Ah. Even more stylish with the stubble and a kind of wry expression on his face. I like that a lot. That is really nice printing. Visor is up really good. And this is... Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, Tyler, there you are. There you go. Here's another tanker. He seems rather upset. I get the feeling that this is like the new guy on the tank. Like he has to dig the latrines and, and do all the unsafe. You see, he just looks unhappy. I don't know why. Looks um, like gross, like he's going. But he's, he's got another, another obviously tank helmet with with even larger things. His own sort of print, which is nice, black gloves, but just doesn't seem happy. Hasn't shaved in a while either. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's upset. So, and this is Tio, right. CG. There you are, man. There's you. Smile. All right, this guy, I don't know if he's shaved or not because he's wearing a bandana. He has. Well, you can pull his face up to see, but. Pull his know. face off. Ugh. No, he's wearing a fireproof hood, so he's probably one of the crew members. This guy probably is, has had to be sticking his head out the, the window. That's why he's got his face covered because he doesn't want to eat a lot of dust. Again, movable goggles, very nice. Interesting camouflage, which is different than the others. I like this, this guy. He can go here. Let's make him the commander just because he's got the special, he's got the unique camouflage, which is as good a reason as any. And that is Isaiah. Okay. And then, Hope you're well, man. Hi hey. to your mom for me. See, don't, don't stand up that high. That's not good for you. Again, infantry carrying what looks to be, this is very interesting. This is, yeah, an M4 with a grenade launcher and a, a scope. Again, individual printed chest rig, very nice. Matte finish on the, the infantry helmet. He actually is clean shaven with some, some vague camouflage paint on his face. Not a whole lot, but you know, it's the desert. What are you gonna do? There's not a lot of things you have to evoke. So, and this is... That's me, Scotty. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, Scotty. And, oh, this guy was, wow, he's got, oh, it's turned around, that's why. This guy, I like this very nice detail, this headset with the earphones. And, but, but he's also got a very stylish beret, maroon beret, very nice. Again, carrying a Desert Eagle, which is, let's call that, let's see, region accurate, let's call it that. He's got the same camouflage, actually, so it's not completely unique. Very nice goatee with some stubble, quite stylish. And this is... You, man. This is me, oh, this is me. Okay, goatee, and yes. Let's see if I pull his beret off if he's got gray hair. No, he's just got a hole in his head, so it is just like me. That's good to know. All right, you guys, you know what time it is. You're gonna probably need two base plates. Actually, I think one is just barely enough for the tank. But if you wanna have the mine roller here and you kinda of wanna know what the size of this is like, there you go. How is that for visual presentation? So for the length all the way up to the mine roller, you can kinda of count there, it's around 53 studs by length. And now for the width, it's kind of around 18 studs by width. Now let's check the height. Alrighty, you have your one by four bricks. You're gonna need about 18 if you wanna to get to the antenna, like kind of close to there at least anyway. And if I put this there, you can see it's just touching the tip of that. That is 18 bricks in height. Now if you took the antennas off and you just wanted to see kind of roughly the tank itself, I put it right there. That is around 13 bricks in height. Yeah, there you go. You can destroy your city using this tank. Yeah, there's your dimension, guys. That's the thing that amazes me about uh, brick construction is when they manage to stay within sort of that realm, but they can get so close to creating something almost visually indistinguishable from the original. So this is really I think it's something. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can drop this. this. No, I need to just... Should we be nice to take the... No, we'll leave them on there. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah. The figures came off. Yeah, one, one the gun. Figures. There you go. And Good. these things really aren't designed for that. Well, the turret got loose, but that's yeah. easy to put back on. Okay. Again, single stud design. So. There we go. There you go. Not too bad, right? Pretty good. Very good. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Yes, thank you. 
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to subscribe to the Silver Spleen. Check out his channel yes, for please. Hong Kong movie reviews. Yes. Comment and make sure you ask for Sean to come back so I can get him an excuse to get him back on here. Sure. Yeah? All right, you guys. All time right. to get these videos out. Until next time, brick him up. Boom. Oh, back up, back up, two steps. There you go. What the hell are you doing? What a bad example.